So uh, we just started this project and I want to show how I use uh, ShadCN Kit in practice. So we have published ShadCN Kit and I would like to show like how I would use it to basically create a user interface, right? So I took some uh, text from like a screenshot and I'm now recreating this screenshot inside with like editable Figma layers. So here I'm changing to this to paragraph medium. I'm changing this to paragraph regular. And I'm going to maybe set this text to like neutral uh, 700. And then this one to neutral 900. And that looks like a good color. Maybe I want this a bit more muted, so I would set it to like 500. And uh, I have the avatar here, and let's just make this a component, right? Because we're talking about these team members. So I want to take this content and like make it a component. So let's duplicate this and let's uh, basically put in that content. So we have senior designer, we have Emma Davis. UI designer, uh, and that's MC, ED, uh, AR, Alex Rodriguez, the developer. Okay. Um, I think this used to be an icon, so I can like look at the screenshot and see what we are like recreating, right? But um, I think it's, these videos will be about the kit, but they will also contain some Figma tips. So right now I have this, this kind of like weirdly shaped um, uh, component, but uh, let's not focus on that right now. And let's put like a heading four. We'll also put a heading four here. Uh, and let's look at what we are recreating, right? So we have timeline and management. I'm actually not gonna put those buttons uh, here. I don't think that's going to be what the UI will look like. So I think I will just uh, delete that. And I will put like a little uh, icon button. And on the icon button, I would then put the, uh, the trash icon like here. Uh, let's for the left icon put, I think it's called delete or trash. Let's see, trash. And then I change my variant for now to like a secondary button. Okay, so, well, I think this is interesting. Like, why not make this like a whole like theme card component? Like I was planning to only make like this part a component, but why not go ahead and make like the, the whole thing a component? Although I think I want to do it in two components. So here, let's give it some auto layout. Actually, I will first want to put auto layout on these two layers and then on the outer layer. I want to command click this area and give it like 16 padding. And then within this logic, let's see if I can look at the file menu. I have my avatar and I have this um, area. Maybe I will make this like small text, like paragraph, small, regular. Okay. Now it aligns a bit better with the side and let's change the the padding here to 16 and i want to maybe make this a bit smaller and then i want to make another component so let's call this team member and i want to make another component out of like the team member plus this kind of um delete uh, button so we have team member row let's call it team member row um, so now we want to change like all that content inside of team member row so that it's consistent. So how would we do that? Um, I think what we can do, um, to, to make it better is like, we could go ahead and like copy all of this override, but that is a bit annoying. Um, and you could probably do like an optimization with, a with a master plugin, but I don't want to bother for like five items or for five items. Like if I'm in my workflow, like I will just do it myself. 
but if it would be more we could potentially automate it using the, the master uh, plugin bike lab. So uh, we here have these um, items and let's give each team member, uh, well, let's see if it has auto layout. I don't think it has. So now we change this to let's say 48. We also give it some sides, let's say 24. And now these inner sides can be removed. So I can put this to zero. And then they should all have like the hug contents on auto hide. I think this should actually be 16. Um, and just so we can see what we're doing, like I don't really want to recreate this UI 100% because this is AI generated and I don't really see a reason like why there should be like separate cards for every item. But I do like a border, uh, so I'm going to add a border uh, as a division. So let's put it uh, um, here, bottom, and let's give it like a neutral 200 color. And let's put all of these together. Uh, there's some layer in the middle here that's preventing me from doing so. Okay, so I have all of them together. And adding a new team member, that functionality needs to exist, but the way that the um, AI did it is kind of horrible. Um, so I will uh, use the primary variant and then I will um, add a left icon, I will do add, um, and then uh, let's copy this here, add new team member, uh, didn't copy it completely, so I'll just do add team member, and I also do not like uh, using sentence case, so I will avoid that uh, for now. So I will put this in a bar, then I will use command click here with 24, I will copy actually the layout of this member row and put it on here and then stretch it. And instead of 48, I put auto. And this means that uh, the position between the left side and the right side would be determined by the width. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I don't know what the client would be, but uh, let's just put a placeholder right now. Maybe let's do like an actual placeholder. So let's do something like, you don't have any clients yet. Please add your first client. So you see I'm dictating to the computer and what I'm doing here is that I'm using Whisperflow. So this is an app. This is my webcam, webcam software, but where is my Whisper app? Like here I use Whisperflow and Whisperflow is an app to dictate to your computer. So let's also put an auto layout around here. Command click 32, then on appearance, we give it like a neutral 50 background and we give it a 16 pixels border radius. And maybe we will also uh, center the text. Well, I didn't do the right shortcut, so I'll do it again. Uh, and let's see if we stretch this out, we should also have auto here. So let's put auto so this uh, works correctly and let's stretch this out to the sides. So let's now give like this should be a list, right? So we call it list and uh, then we have uh, a heading and like you're gonna be like why does he put auto layout like for a heading like just like that like there's only a single heading like why should it have an auto layout box? But the reason is that if we do it this way, uh, everything uh, will, will line up in the end. So I'll just copy paste this and uh, put clients. And then I will um, like stack everything together, actually put an auto layout around these two and put an auto layout around these two. So now if I uh, put an, another auto layout around these two, I can determine the distance between the two sections. And then I put another auto layout and that's the, like the outer layer. So that should actually be a fill layer, but this one doesn't have an auto layout yet. So let's add it. Now let's add the fill container. Let's add the fill on this side. Let's center our content. Let's remove the 15 here. 
Um, and then let's fix this uh, element up. So we would have a fill container here. And this one should also have fill container probably. Um, so we're getting there with like our basic uh, setup. And I am just spotting that there's some stuff that I don't really like. And there's things that I want to change. So I'm going to go into my design system, let's say, uh, and uh, what I want to change, and this is the whole idea behind using this component kit, is that you can tweak it to how you would like it. So I, for one, I know I won't use like these avatar variants, like the, the these ones, so I'll just delete them. And uh, may probably at some point I will want photos, so I will keep that. Uh, but this uh, CN, so like the text itself, I'm going to detach that here and I'm going to make it semi-bold. And I'm just going to make a mental, mental note that if we change Geist to something else, maybe I will have to uh, go around and do it like manually. But that's all right for now. So we publish uh, the changes here. And we go back to our design. And the other thing that I wanted to change is the, the button. So I kind of do like, like having a, a blue button like here. And what I'm gonna do to pull in uh, the colors is that I'm gonna look at the current colors. We actually already have blue here. So I'm just gonna change this default one over to uh, blue. Uh, so blue 900 maybe blue 500, right? The hover and active, uh, let's make it 400. The disabled could stay the same. The focus here, I'm also gonna make it blue 500. And then I could do that for like the other sizes of buttons, uh, but I'm not uh, gonna bother now. I'm just gonna make a note here, like if we stick with the same buttons, uh, please change the color. So um, we're gonna publish that and we will uh, move back to our design file. So in our design file, um, we uh, can move on to like the next thing, right? So I'm gonna delete that screenshot here and I'm gonna call this team member management. And I'm going to pull in uh, my changes. Uh, so normally it should actually change this button, but it didn't. So let's see, uh, it published. And here I pulled it in. This is the wrong button, assets. I pulled in this library, so I don't really know why it's not changing yet. Primary, secondary, weird. Update selected instance, primary, okay, so there it is. So Figma is a bit weird in, in that publishing sometimes that it's a bit slow. Um, so this is actually a bit misaligned, right? This should actually also be 16. And then this one should also be 16. And as you know, as you notice, I do not actually use the tailwind spacing variables because I know the numbers by heart and it's a bit annoying to click like too many drop downs. So if we look at this uh, next uh, thing, we ha kind of have like an extension to the team overview where it's not just, uh, I think there's an error here, I should fill that, where it's not just uh, the person, but it's their role, which is also already contained here, but they also we also have availability hours a day, total tasks, total workload, uh, this week active projects and actions. So let's think about this because this is AI generated and I don't know if this makes any like real sense, right? So hours a day, I do like it because some people are part-time, but the hours are sometimes tied to a day. Total tasks, I don't like it because I think it should be managed somewhere else. Total workload is also stupid to put it on a table because you can see it visually in like the main user interface. And this week is also useless. Like who's gonna go to the team overview to see this data? 
Like I don't like it at all. Active projects might be relevant, but I don't know if I would want to implement this. So let's also remove it. So all of this is actually quite irrelevant. Um, but let's say that a person, a person has a schedule um, and they have a role um, and they have an avatar. Uh, so let's, let's do like scheduling, right? Let's think about that. Um, so at that point, we would have to make a wireframe and make it more extensive. So I'm going to stop the video here and I hope this showed you like how I like interpret a wireframe and then take it to uh, a real design.